Okay, good afternoon. Today is a recap of what we started last time, all about logical and arithmetic binary shifts. So logical shifts are the easier of the two. Um, so the idea is that just in the same way, um, oh, I'm going to do a little bit of reminiscing. I remember a supply teacher coming into my school when I was in secondary school, um, and he taught us about multiplication by jumping to the left and jumping to the right. And it was all very energetic and all a bit creepy and weird. But I've never forgotten that lesson. Um, maths teachers will get very cross with you if you say that when you multiply by 10, you move the decimal place um, or you move the numbers because there's something important about, like, you don't just add, no, you, they get cross with you if you say you just add a zero or take a zero away because what happens is you move the decimal place. That's the right way around, I think. Probably forgotten that. But we know that if you move the decimal place in a deanery number, you multiply by 10 or you divide by 10. Very similar pattern today, but with binary numbers, much easier. And instead of powers of 10, as in deanery, 100, 10, 1,000, all of that, it's powers of 2. So there's two types of shifts, logical and arithmetic. We're dealing with logical today, and they're easier. And this is an example of a shift. So we've got a number in binary here. We know it's odd because the least significant bit is 1. Um, and if we shift it left, that means we're shifting in a 0 and all of the other bits go left. So look, we've lost that bit. That bit has gone. It's disappeared. It was 23. It's now 46. And the result is it's been multiplied by 2. Kind of makes sense. If we go right, then we divide by 2, but not exactly dividing by 2. We do some rounding. Do we round up? Do we round down? Do we round to the closest number? So this is what happens with integer division. Remember in Python, let's see if we can bring this up. Um, if we have an integer number like 5 divided by 2, and we print the result using integer um, um, division. Well, this is not integer division because that's not an integer number. In Python, we can use the, does that work? Hmm, no, how do we do integer division in Python? I should know this. So let's try the same with integer division. 5 divided by 2, integer division, is not 2 and a half because that's not an integer. It's not three, that's what a mathematician would do if they rounded two and a half, they'd round up, wouldn't they? Integer division rounds down, why? Because what this actually means is a logical shift, one space to the right, where we lose one of the bits. That's what's actually happening behind the scenes here with integer division, we're dividing by two. All right, shifting more than once, what happens, blah de blah, oh, we just divide by two more than one time. Um, I don't like the slides. Let's just crack on with the worksheet. This is what you need to open, please. I'll give you your screens back. Let's find P8, and then I'll cast us a window as we go through the first couple. So let's get you started. Deanery means base 10. What do we mean by base 10? I mean this is times 10 to the 0. Anything raised to the power 0 is just 1. This is 10 to the power 1. 10 to the power 1 is just 10. This is 10 to the power 2, 10 squared, which is 100. If there was another digit, that would be 10 to the power 3. Just like in binary, the least significant bit is 2 to the 0. The next least significant bit is 2 to the 1. Come back to that. The binary pattern before the shift, well, we need to be able to convert this to binary, don't we? So, purple spotty book time, 11. 2 to the power 0, anything to the power 0 is 1. 2 to the power 1 is just 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the power 4 is 16. And we keep going. So, we're trying to get to 11. 128 is too big. 64 is too big. 32 is too big. 64 is too big. We're going to need... No, we're not. What am I talking about? 16 is, yeah, Ugh, it's a long day. We're going to need 8 in order to get to 11, so I put a 1 in there. If we've got 8, there's 3 more to get to 11. 4's too big, we're going to
going to need two to make three. With one left. There we go. That is our binary number. 1011. So I'm going to pop that in here. 1011. And we've got four zeros in front of it. One, two, three, four. I'm going to put a space so it's separated into half bytes or nibbles. Then it says we've got a logical shift left of one position. So I'm going to start with the same values. That bit is lost. It overflows. And we have to pad in an extra zero in a logical shift. We always pad in zeros. That's it. Then we work out what this binary value is. So let's go back to the book. I'm going to do the shift. So I've got one, two, three zeros, then one, zero, one, one. And I've put an extra zero in. Why? Because I've shifted left. Can you see? I've shifted each bit left. That one's gone. And I've got an extra zero in here. We always pad with zeros for logical shifts. Not the same for arithmetic shifts, but it is the same for logic shifts. Always pad with zeros. Then we work out what this is. So that is 16 plus 4 plus 2, which is 22, I think. So that worked. If we shifted 11 in deanery to the left, it would be worth 10 times as much, 110. If we shifted 11 in binary to the left, it would be worth twice as much because each bit to the left is worth twice as much. That shouldn't be a surprise if you've understood the maths behind it. So you've got a little bit of time now to do each of these. Happy to come around individually and talk through some examples and we'll look at the last one in a couple of minutes. So let's have a look at this last one. 101, we need 101 in binary. So I'm not going to try and do it in my head. I'm going to write 101 down. 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 cubed, 2 to the power um, 4, etc. until I've got 8 bits. Always do this for every binary question. You've got plenty of time in your exams. You're not going to run out of time. Got to get to 101, 128 is too big. I'm going to need 64. Common misconception is, oh, interesting, what happened to my camera? That's not happened before. Let's try again. There's only one combination of zeros and ones to make any value. It's not like there's lots of them and we're just guessing. There's only one possible combination of zeros and ones. I've got 64, I need 36 to get to 100, so 37 to get to 101. That means I'm going to need 32 with five more to go. There we go. That's the binary number, 01100. 101. Then we've got a binary pattern after the shift. I'm going to copy and paste it, shift it one space to the left so one bit disappears and I get a zero on the other side. Then I need to work it all out, but can we just work it out in our heads? It should be 202, shouldn't it? Should be able to prove it by doing 128 plus 64 plus whatever these ones are, plus 10. Okay, activity two has the same numbers-ish. No, they're not quite the same, just the first one's the same. So 11 is still that. There we go. But this time we're going right. So that's exactly the same at the moment. Um, if we're shifting right, one of these bits is disappearing. That one's disappeared, so we have lost some precision. Yes, some precision has been lost because we've lost a 1. If there was a 0 there, it wouldn't make any difference at all. You'll see what that means in a moment. And remember, we have to pad with a 0 if it's a logical shift. 
don't always pad with a zero if it's an arithmetic shift. We'll come back to that next lesson. So what is the result of this? Well, it's 1 plus 4, which is 5. And look, 11 divided by 2 is not 5. 11 divided by 2 is 5 and a half. We've lost some precision. So whenever we lose a 1 off the edge, we have lost some precision because we're only storing integers, whole numbers. All right, see if you can do the rest of activity two. So we want to check and see if we've got the right answer here. First of all, what is 53? This is our estimate. Is our estimate going to be correct? Let's have a look. 53, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Those are too big. We're going to need a 32, which means we need 21 more to get to 53. Um, 21 from 16 is 5 more. There we go. Ooh, sorry, that was a bit of a weird angle. So we should have 0011, 0101. Is that what we've got? Yes. Nice. Then we take that value shift it off to the right we lose that one so yes there is precision lost and we pad in with an extra zero i'm just going to adjust where the spaces are the spaces are not actually there it's just to make it easier to read yep i agree with that value too if we then do two plus eight plus 16 we should get 26. nice have we lost precision yes how do we know because we've lost a one we also know that 53 divided by 2 is not exactly 26. Nice. Well done. Okay. Activity 3, this time, there's shifting in multiple places. So that's like saying, take the number 13 and times by, not by 10, by 100, or by 1,000, or by 10,000. We don't have to do any deanery conversion, so these are actually really easy. Logical left three. Three bits disappear. Three bits reappear, and they're always zeros for a logic shift. I'm going to put the spaces in the right place. Did we lose any ones? No, we only lost zeros, so that does not impact the value at all. Let's choose... This one down at the bottom. Logic right five. So one, two, three, four, five bits lost. Some of them are ones. So yes, we've lost precision. One, two, three, four, five. Doesn't matter if you're putting them on the left or the right, they are always zeros for a logic shift. I said doesn't matter there. Just want to be clear, it does matter whether it is left or whether it is right, but it is always zeros that you pad in with a logic shift. All right. I'll give you an, your, your extension a little bit later, but for now, just work your way through these. If you've finished, you can continue with the data two revision quiz on the VLE. So your first priority is to work through activity one, activity two, and activity three at your own pace. But most of you will finish this fairly soon. It's quite a quick worksheet today. Um, so I'd like you to go to tools.withcode.uk slash binary challenge, all one word, all lowercase. And you can choose what you need to practice. We haven't done hexadecimal yet. I wouldn't do that. You don't need to do sign and magnitude. It's not in the specification, although we have covered it. Um, Today is all about logical shifts, so you might just want to practice that. So this will give you 20 questions all about logic shifts, and you can check and see if you got it right. So a logical shift for that. The thing that might confuse people here is the little 2. That just means it's a binary number, base 2. If you copy and paste it, you get a big 2 here. Right, this is how many spaces? One space to the right. I'm going to lose that one, pad in a 0. Dead easy. Oh, but apparently I got it wrong. Oh dear. Let's try again, shall we? One space to the right. We should get rid of that one. 
and put an extra zero in there. There we go, that's better. So what have we done so far? You can test yourself on any of these except for the hexadecimal. Although if you want to have a look ahead and find out about hexadecimal, if you want to have a look ahead, we have actually covered arithmetic shifts. Your extension challenge is to choose which type of questions you want to have a go at and then screenshot your scores in your Word document before we upload, um, which is in 20 minutes at quarter past. So we're going to do an extra extension today. I want um, the user to enter a number in Deanery, convert to binary, display the result. Then ask the user to shift left or right, display the result in binary, and display the result in Deanery. There's quite a lot of different things going on here, both Python and the theory. So let's see how much we can do before we get to quarter past when we're going to save and upload. If we ask the question, enter a Deanery number. If we ask a question, we should listen to the answer. There we go. That's what it does so far. We put a number in. However, it's a number, and I want it as a number, rather than a string. So it has to be converted to an integer. I would like that same number in binary. So we can use the built-in bin function, just like int converts to an integer, bin converts to binary. Um, the argument that we give it is this one. Nice. Can we display the results? Will it work? Let's see. 10 in binary is that. Well, we get this weird prefix that I told you about a few lessons ago, and I said, well, we don't know how to get rid of that yet. But now we do, because we've used string indexing, haven't we? An indexing expression in here. So that is the first character, Ugh, just a zero. If I want the B, that's going to be index one, the second character. That, to the end, is what I want. So let's see, um, 10 in here, that is now in binary. Excellent. However, I kind of want it as 8 bits. Hmm. Maybe I'll ignore that for now. Let's just ask left or right. Um, input left, shift, brackets, capital L, or right, shift, sift. Just I didn't spell it the other way this time. And I'll call that direction. So we're going to need our if statements this time. If the direction is equal to left, then... We want to shift left. Otherwise, we want to shift the other direction. So how do we do that? Well, let's have a new value or shifted value. We can do this with um, string indexing, can't we? It's going to be the old value, the binary value. So let's do that indexing here from the third to the end. Then, hmm, what can we do now? Let's just say it's the original one and hope for the best. And we need some indexing expressions on the end. Display the result um, shifted value. It hasn't actually shifted it yet, but let's test it. Right. 10 in binary is that. So I want to shift it in one space. Oh, but no, I do need to pad it with zeros, don't I? Hum. And I'm not sure if we can do this with everything that you've been taught how to do in Python so far. My register isn't saved. Oh, well, that's as far as we're going to get by quarter past. Um, you need to screenshot what you've got so far, make sure it is saved, your Word document, closed, 
and submitted, please, to half term two, data two. Thanks for your hard work. I'll save this and we can come back to it um, next lesson when we've learned a little bit more. We need to learn how to do repetition, iteration, for loops in order to, to make this work.